What is up everyone, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing great, and I hope you're all staying safe. Today I have some pretty damn interesting news, and I know that this news has been out in the wild for a few days now, however, I've had other videos to make, so if anybody in the comments section dares to criticize me for being late, yet again, no ASMR for you. But I have some pretty damn good news. We have a brand new headset and a brand new CPU on the way, from Qualcomm and from a company that I have never heard of before. Now, don't get too excited just yet. This headset is not going to be a direct competitor to the Oculus Quest 2. However, that CPU might actually make something for the Quest 2. But I will explain why it isn't a direct competitor in just a few seconds. But first, I need to figure out how to pronounce this thing. Yes, this is my second coffee today. So, we're looking at the Varjo VR three or Varjo or Va guys it's Varjo okay I'm calling it Varjo and that's it it has the XR3 which means I have a new CPU to simp for because as many of you may know I was a hardcore simp for the XR2 well now I get to simp for the XR3 but that isn't where the excitement over this headset ends. So I'm going to tell you all the specs of this headset and you can attempt to guess the price. Now, it is probably what you think it is. It's, it's not a direct competitor to the Quest 2. <laughs> it includes inside out tracking, even though you can use SteamVR base stations too, which is amazing because if we had more headsets like that, that had both inside out and you had some sort of base stations for it, like for example, if the Oculus Quest could use the CV1 base stations, well, better tracking all around. So that's pretty cool. It even has ultra leap hand tracking. Now, if you guys don't know what ultra leap is, this is an ultra leap also known as a leap motion. They were rebranded as ultra leap a little while ago so it has built-in ultra leap hand tracking which is pretty dope because if you guys know you can actually turn this into steam vr index controllers which is pretty damn cool if you have the right drivers so this thing has a lot of capabilities i'm not going to try pronounce that part it has the latest resolution bionic display the company pitches it having a focus area of 27 degrees by 27 degrees at 70 ppd u oled so it's an oled display finally 1920 by 1920 pixels per eye, which is just amazing. It has a peripheral area of over 30 PPD LCD. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I know what that means because I don't, but for any of you that do, there you go, pretty exciting. 2880 by 2720 pixels per eye, which is, you know, that is amazing. The XR3 also features LiDAR and stereo RGB video pass through and it will be running at 90 hertz. That is a little bit of like, that's disappointing. Like that is very, dis D don't get me wrong, 90 hertz is great and it looks good, but that is disappointing for this headset, especially for the price. Uh, so what's the LiDAR being used for? Varjo says, its depth awareness will help enable seamless merging of real and virtual for perfect occlusions and full 3D world reconstruction. Okay, pretty damn cool. So it looks like we're gonna have some quality AR in here. The XR3 is available for pre-order now with plans to ship in early 2021. So this thing is not far away at all. So th this is where this is where the part where I was like, yeah, this thing isn't going to be a direct competitor to the Oculus Quest 2 because this thing is only available to enterprise buyers and it's priced at a very low price of $5,495. So you know, if you guys want me to buy this, comment down. No, no, guys, I'm not buying this. That's a lot of money, guys. Plus, I'm not an enterprise. So, you know, that, that's a very low price for us consumers. Oh, guys, let me know if you're going to be getting this headset. But this is exciting for the VR world in many ways because, I mean, let's be real, as much as not many people will be buying this, especially at that price, this brings upgrades that we have never seen before. For example, built-in Ultra Leap into the headset. I'm pretty sure companies have tried that before, but I think this is the first headset that we've heard of that genuinely implements this and does it correctly. If I'm correct, one of the Pimaxes actually had this. Now, the downside to this one is you also need to pay $1,495 per year for uh, software services. Yeah. That's a thing. At least, guys, at least it's lower than the version with the XR1. Because the version with the XR1 was only $10,000, you know? So at least, at least it's lower than that. 
Now, you may be asking, how's the XR3 lower than the XR1? Well, that's because technology degradation over time. Technology just gets cheaper. Even better technology gets cheaper, you know? Like, in the past, I wouldn't be able to have this phone for this price, which means this entire headset is going to degrade over time and get cheaper, which means I might be able to get it in about 10 years' time. So, if I'm still alive in 10 years' time, well, you guys might end up seeing that. So this thing is like so damn close to human eye resolution that I think personally, realistically, there would be no screen door effect. And if there is, I don't know, you have like super sight or something. I'm half blind, so that doesn't really, that doesn't really connect with me. But damn oh damn is this thing intense. This thing has like everything we'd ever want in a headset except for the price. Which is why I think, personally, this is exciting. This is going to push VR forward in a way that other companies are going to catch on and they're going to be like, oh yeah, this is nice, let's, let's just steal this and sell it for a cheaper price, you know? Like Facebook, for example. So I think this is great. This is absolutely amazing. This is the highest headset we can have right now on the shelf uh, that no one is going to have. And it is probably a direct competitor to the HP Omnicept edition of the Reverb G2, which is also coming in 2021. It, it looks it looks better it, and, and, and it looks cool. It has those two little eyes at the front. It's It looks pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. But let's move on to the new Snapdragon processor that actually is better than the Quest 2. Because I know, yeah, you know, Qualcomm has that thing where they release a new processor straight after a new device is released. So the Quest 2 was released and Qualcomm just decided, you know what? We need to make something better so that everybody that bought the Quest 2 now doesn't have the best CPU anymore. <laughs> so Qualcomm has announced its 2021 flagship chipset this week, the Snapdragon 888. It claims its new GPU is 35% more powerful than the one in the Quest 2, which is a big leap, you know? That, imagine that. The Quest 2 is already pretty amazing, right? We can all agree on that. 90 hertz refresh rate can possibly be bumped up to 120 hertz. The battery life is a little bit meh, but it is all in all a portable device with almost 4K panels that runs games at a smooth frame rate. Like it can reach that 90 hertz frame rate, no problem, you know, the 90 FPS mark. It has no issues with that, as long as games are correctly optimized, of course. So imagine the 888 in this. So you might be asking yourself, wait, why is this? Well, the Quest 2 has the XR2 processor, and that XR2 processor has the GPU of the Adreno and and. Adreno? Yeah, Adreno. 650. Well, obviously the XR2 utilizes that a little bit better, but the Snapdragon 888 supports Qualcomm's new Adreno 660 GPU, which is of course one shelf higher, meaning it gets that boost in frame rate 35%. And Mr. Who's the Boss actually made a video about a phone that has this new processor and talked about the improvements that it makes towards games because it has many new technologies that improve frame rate even if the game doesn't utilize the GPU's full potential. But when a game does utilize the CPU's full potential, oh, oh, that's when stuff gets interesting. In the future, Facebook could launch a Pro or enterprise focused HMD using it, or HTC could take the opportunity and update the Vive Focus Plus, which still uses the same 2017 chip as the original Quest, which is kind of sad. But that gives us a lot of opportunities. You know, CPUs get upgraded every year, which means automatically mobile VR is going to only get better and better, as long as companies actually utilize the chips which is why I'm super excited for this new mobile chip, not only for phones, but also for VR. I think if companies jump onto that bandwagon, and even if Facebook does release another Quest 2 Pro with the CPU and bumps up that refresh rate to 120 hertz, you know what I'm talking about, Facebook. I know you can. And the price is still reasonable. I think a lot of people might be interested, including me, because I, I, I collect headsets. I, uh, I, I... I, I, I collect headsets. So those are two pretty damn exciting pieces of news about new hardware that is coming to the VR space in 2021, which is very soon, guys. Let me let me remind you, that's like less than a month away. So this has been a pretty damn exciting year for VR. But looking at this, we've got some pretty dank headsets coming, including the Deca Gear. I think 2021 is going to be an absolutely incredible year for VR, or at least that's what it's lining up to be. Let me know what you think down below. Are you guys excited for this? What would you guys do with the power of that new CPU? And what do you guys want to see coming to VR in 2021? 
all the specs and all the pieces of news, all the articles are down below in case you want to read this for yourself in more detail. I just kind of skimmed through it here, but in case you guys are interested in the hardcore facts, details, hardware, it's all down below. So if you guys liked today's video, please give it a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys like this type of content and are not yet part of the community, we've got a Discord down below. We've also got a Reddit, so make sure to join that and post your spicy memes. And if you guys want to support the channel in any way, shape or form, we've got merch down below, which doesn't put a huge ad on your body. You know, I don't like that. I don't like when companies put a huge ad. And we've got mugs that boost your FPS by 300%. It's a stated fact. So if you guys want to do that, that's all down below. Or you can visit mysticalstore.com. Totally not stolen from lttstore.com. Not, not at all. No, don't, don't, don't try. So if you guys want to be notified about this type of content, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead. Ding my bell. See you again in the next video. Peace.